Hey, welcome to our Wednesday night Kids for Truth video lesson. Tonight for our Kids for Truth video lesson, we're going to do our final lesson on prayer as we wrap up our study that we've been doing for the past few weeks. We have already learned that prayer is simply talking to God. We said prayer is asking God for things which He has promised to give. It's not a way to get God to give us what's on our list. Prayer is asking us to ask God to give us what He has already promised to give. And the most helpful place we've been learning to know how to ask for the things that God has promised to give is called the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer, we learned that there are three kinds of prayers. First, there are prayers of adoration. The prayer says to pray, hallowed be your name. Those are the things that we praise and thank God for. It's wanting God's name to be magnified, God to be seen, and God to be glorified. The second kind of way we are supposed to pray that the Lord, Lord's Prayer teaches us is we are to pray prayers of request. It says in the prayer, give us this day our daily bread. That means that we are to be asking God for things. And remember that we learned that sometimes the answer to our request is yes, and sometimes the answer is no, or maybe not now, just wait. And it's important to remember that just because we sometimes don't see an immediate answer and we have to wait, it doesn't mean that God isn't listening to us. And it doesn't mean that we didn't receive an answer. It simply means that God is bigger and wiser than we are. And he is saying for right now, the best thing is for you to just wait. But tonight, what we're going to do is look at the third and the final lesson on prayer that the Lord's Prayer teaches us. In that prayer, it also says, forgive us our debts. I'm going to call this lesson the prayers of repentance. You see, we do need to have prayers that praise and adore God, and we do need to have prayers that really request and ask Him for things, but we also need to look at our sins often, and we need to have prayers that are repentance and prayers that are confession to God. Now, what that means is, is that we confess that we have sinned and that we, that we need God to forgive us. And we know from the Bible that God's forgiveness is always based on Jesus dying on the cross to forgive our sins. But as Christians who have trusted in Jesus' death on the cross to forgive their sins, we still know that we sin and we need to confess daily and repent of our sins to God. And that's why in the Lord's Prayer, it tells us to also pray, forgive us our debts. Now tonight, I'd like to show you an object lesson to illustrate what it means to confess sin and repent through prayer. Now, I brought a few things with me and I want to show you what they are, okay? First of all, I brought this glass and this glass is going to represent our lives, all right? It's our lives, it's who we are, that's what that's going to represent. And I also brought a candle with me. And this candle is going to represent what should be in our lives and what should be in our hearts. And that is prayers of repentance and confession to God. Now, this time what we're going to do is we're gonna take some water as well. I brought some little blue water here and we're gonna let this blue water here represent the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit is in us as Christians, but I wanna show you an illustration of what happens when we let sin come into our lives. So we have the Holy Spirit who obviously is illustrated here by the blue water. And I wanna light this little candle here and it's going to represent our prayer of repentance, the burning desire for God to cleanse our lives. Because you see, even though we know that in our lives is the Holy Spirit, there are times when we don't let him influence our life. We let that get pushed out as it were. And the Bible says it's called grieving the Holy Spirit. So now as we have this prayer here represented by the candle of our prayer of repentance, our desire for God to clean up and burn up those things in our life, I want to show you something real neat that happens in this illustration here. When I place the candle inside the glass and the burning passion to repent and clean things up in our life starts taking place. Watch this.
Did you see that? Did you notice what happened here? That whenever the power of the Holy Spirit started causing us to desire for him to clean up and burn out those things in our life, more of him was now in our life. All of that blue water started drawing up inside of that glass. And that's important for us to remember here because what it's teaching us is an important lesson about when we have the confession of sin in our lives. When we pray these prayers of repentance, it really cleanses those things that are in our life and more of the influence of God's Holy Spirit is now back in our lives. It creates more opportunity for the desires of the Holy Spirit in us to be something that pleases God rather than our sin. Now that's the, the lesson I want you to think about tonight as we think about the prayers of confession and repentance. And one thing I know about confessing and repenting, and I think you learned before long, is that it takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of humbling of ourselves to admit our own sin, our own weaknesses, our failure, and our wrongdoing. That's never easy. I don't care if you're a young person or you're an older person. It's always hard. But as we humble ourselves before God, it means that His work in our lives can be more seen. And He replaces our pride and our sin with more of Himself. And that's what our illustration about the prayers of confession and repentance hopefully shows you tonight. And so we know that the Bible says we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God's glory. How do we in prayer then confess and repent of our sins? Well. Whether we've got angry, whether we've lied, whether we've stolen something, been jealous, used bad words, the list can go on and on. What we need to do is maybe not let those sins keep lingering in our lives. Maybe if you think it's just a small thing, you should stop thinking of it as just a small thing where you quickly just say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. But maybe spend a little time realizing what your sin has done. Your sin has caused God's Son to have to die on the cross for your sins. Your sin has kept Him from working in your lives when that burning desire of repentance and cleaning up your life was not there. And so when you confess your sins to God, what you do is you actually are agreeing with God that you have sinned and you have failed Him. And maybe moms and dads and grandparents, you can help your kids even learn this. Whenever they get in trouble, I've often seen kids, particularly sometimes young kids, have a little bit of that Romans 7 kind of fear. You know, that trembling and shaking fear when they've been caught doing something they know they shouldn't have been doing. Whether it's just something of saying that, Mom, I know you told me not to get the cookies until they were cool, but I really wanted one. And they know they are in trouble and they somewhat have fear and trembling. Maybe moms and dads and grandparents in those moments, we can help them learn how to humble themselves and confess their sin to God and repent of that. Help, help them by stopping even at that moment and showing them maybe what it looks like to tell God they're sorry. To maybe pray a prayer that sounds something like this. God, what I've done is sin. It's wrong. It's nobody's fault but mine. And God, I am sorry for that. And then help them to understand how much they need the influence of the Holy Spirit in their life to obey God and to do what He says for them to do. Only the Holy Spirit can help a Christian do and continue to want to please God. So help them to maybe pray like this. God, help me to want to obey you like I know you want me to. And then we can do the same thing when not only they have sinned and they need to confess, but when we have sinned against our kids, right? We can model it to them as well. I mean, mom and dad and grandparents, we know that there are times when we sometimes lose our temper or really say something we shouldn't say to our toddler or our kid. Maybe at that time, it's a good teaching moment where you just stop and confess what you've done and tell them that it's sin and let them see you ask God for his forgiveness and to ask God to help you by the Holy Spirit to be able to really desire the things that God wants you to desire and do. Well, that's our last lesson on prayer as it relates to confession and repentance. I hope these have been helpful to you. 
I tell you, it's been fun sending you these weekly Wednesday night videos each week. And I hope as we end tonight, our final lesson of our Kids for Truth program, I hope everyone has a wonderful summer. And I want to say to all of us at Kids for Truth, we look forward to seeing you when we start back up next year with our Kids for Truth clubs in the fall.